SpaceX Starship is ready for the first orbital flight. After that, we can ask ourselves, what is Starship for? Well, Starship is for building nations in space. This doesn't mean Project Artemis or some version of the Martian, though Starship could easily do both. We mean serious logistics. The Starship atmospheric test prototypes are deep into construction, and we still hear routinely space visionaries adapting old exploration architectures for Starship. With a Starship or two, they say, I could build a really sweet moon mission. With a Starship or two, I could upgrade the space station. We've got to think bigger, much bigger. In 10 years, Starship flights will be sold by the dozens. Starship is only cheap if it gets used as much as possible. The only meaningful barrier to production today is engine manufacture, and that will be through the hardest part of the learning curve well before commercial flights begin. When we think about how to use Starship, we can't analogize to Christopher Columbus or Captain Cook. In fact, let's avoid analogies entirely, but if you must use an analogy, Let's think instead of the Berlin airlift. In 1948, Allied forces in Berlin were blockaded by Soviets to force capitulation and withdrawal. Instead, the remnants of the demobilized air forces began shipping in food, coal, and other supplies in 3.5T and later 10T increments, the cargo limits of the available planes. Daily demand was five to 10,000 tons as the city neared winter, but the operation scaled rapidly. Over 15 months, 278,000 flights moved 2.3 million tons of cargo right into the city, breaking the blockade. The Berlin airlift functioned as a virtual conveyor belt, moving cargo from one point to another. Starship is a cargo conveyor system. The Starship is comparable in complexity to a 737, so it's not unthinkable to have a construction rate of 500 per year. If each Starship managed 300 flights per year, each carrying 150 tons of cargo, then we're talking a yearly incremental cargo capacity growth of 22 million tons going to orbit. At this point, the most meaningful constraint on launch capacity might be launch pad construction rate. Not all this cargo will be bread and cheese. In fact, by mass, around 90% will simply be more methane and oxygen to refuel the LEO-parked cargo-laden starships for flights to more distant destinations. Much of the remainder would be heavy industrial equipment, as the purpose of these missions is to replicate the industrial stack of Earth. All of those will not be a crazy illusion because right now SpaceX is working on a new modified Starship unlike any other prototype before. Beginning with its cone tip nose section, SpaceX started stacking Starship S26 in October of 2022. By early January 2023, the prototype was stacked to its full 50 meter, which is about 165 foot height, and welded together. After about six more weeks of outfitting, Ship 26 left Starbase's High Bay Assembly Facility and was transported to one of two stands formerly used for suborbital Starship test flights. Ship 26 was then undergoing some cryogenic proof test. On March 1st, S26 left the launch complex, traveled up to the building site, and ended up in High Bay alongside the sister S27. Potentially, engine installation is next. Notably, Ship 26 is very strange to compare to the others. Aside from a range of smaller design changes, Ship 26 has three main differences relative to most prior Starships. First, zero heat shield tiles. Since the 2020-21 period of suborbital Starship flight testing, all finished ships, S20, S21, S22, S24, and S25 had been fitted with about 10,000 black ceramic heat shield tiles. Eventually, those tiles will, theoretically, protect the Starship from intense heat created by re-entering Earth's atmosphere at orbital velocity. Ship 26 also has no flaps. Since SpaceX first fully assembled a Starship in October 2020, every ship the company completed, starting with SN8, SN9, SN10, SN11, SN15, SN16, SN20, 21, 22, 24, and 25, had four large flaps and form-fitting aero covers installed. Starship needs the flaps to steer and orient itself during orbital reentry. 
They need flaps to control themselves during exotic landing maneuvers, which require ships to freefall belly down like a human skydiver and aggressively flip into vertical orientation for propulsive landing. And finally, and most confusingly, Ship 26 has no payload bay of any kind. The end result is a smooth, featureless starship that looks like a steel bullet and can't return to Earth and can't deploy satellites. Combine the fact that it exists at all seems like an elaborate multi-month mistake. But SpaceX clearly intended to build Ship 26 and now is preparing to qualify it for flight. A depot, moon lander, or something else? In simpler terms, Ship 26 is an intentionally expendable starship with no way to launch satellites. And that raises the obvious question, why does it exist? There are a few obvious possibilities. SpaceX is developing at least four types of starships. The crew and tanker ships will have heat shields and flaps. The starship Moonlander will have no flaps or heat shield and will be painted white and insulated. A depot ship with stretched tanks would stay in orbit permanently and store propellant for in-space refilling. Based on low-resolution renders, the bullet-like depot ship is the most reminiscent of Ship 26. However, there's no evidence that Ship 26 has exterior optical properties or optimized for long duration or propellant storage. The prototype also lacks any of the hardware likely needed for docking or propellant transfer and has propellant tanks that are the same size as past ships. To survive in orbit for days or weeks, it would need some kind of power source, typically solar arrays. That isn't present. And even if expendable starship like S-26 can already achieve SpaceX's reported target of 250 tons, which is 550,000 pounds to low Earth orbit, 250 tons is only a fifth of a full propellant load. Ship 26 could also be used for miscellaneous systems testing or a longevity demonstration in orbit. However, it's unclear why SpaceX couldn't simply do that with Ship 24 or Ship 25. Both have had their payload bays permanently sealed, meaning they're only useful as test articles. The same is true for a tank-to-tank -tank propellant transfer test SpaceX received a NASA contract to conduct in 2020. During that test, Starship will transfer 10 metric tons of cryogenic liquid oxygen, or LOX, between its main LOX tank and a smaller header LOX tank used to store landing propellant. But all Starships built to date have header tanks and could be used for the same test. Ship 26 could exist primarily to demonstrate that a starship with no flaps or heat shield tiles is aerodynamically stable during launch. However, expending an entire starship for what amounts to wind tunnel testing would be extravagant. More importantly, this smooth starship isn't alone. It appears that Ship 27 is more or less identical with no heat shields or flaps. However, there's evidence that Ship 27 will have the first working payload bay on a Starship and could be used to deploy full-size Starlink V2 satellites in addition to other testing SpaceX wants to use it for. The most exotic and unlikeliest explanation for 26 and 27 is that the pair is meant to support SpaceX's first Starship docking and propellant transfer test. In October 2022, a NASA official indicated that SpaceX's second Starship test flight would be a Starship-to-Starship -starship propellant transfer. For now, SpaceX's priority is preparing Ship 24 and Super Heavy Booster 7 for Starship's first orbital launch attempt, followed by preparing Ship 25 and Booster 9 for a second orbital test flight. Until then, Ship 26 and Ship 27 will likely remain a bit of a mystery. And that about wraps it up for today's episode. Don't forget, share your ideas in the comments section down below. Your support motivates us to create more quality video. And for that, we thank you so much and hope to see you next time.